I'm using a rather fetching time lapse of the sun setting behind Alan in order to persuade you to remain loyally committed to this episode on the other side of my shameless book plug and introductory animation. Excellent, you've stuck with it, and your rewards are to come. It's possible that you see me walk past this a few times, um, possibly on the sea trials, you'll, you'll have seen it in the back of shots, as I've been trying to get up towards the bow to uh, lower the anchor and stuff like that. Anyway, you can pretty much see what it is. This is a water tank, and actually I bought it a very long time ago, back when this was uh, a project being run by an, a few of us um, on, a, on a previous Arctic endeavour that uh, got covid -ed. And so um, it's just been sat here ever since, really. And uh, I'm not really going to put in any water system yet. All it really needs, frankly, is a is a, a hand pump put in so that I can get water out of it and then pump water back into it again. But uh, it's currently in a spot just in front of the racking here. Um, and I need to get access to what's below it. And that means I need to actually remove it quite quickly. Luckily, it's not particularly um, well bedded in. There we go, that's quite straightforward. Um, because I need to be able to get some work done down below and I will show you that now. Um, also, Paul chose Wonderment. Yes, indeed he did. Paul has signed up to the uppermost level of channel membership, Wonderment. This means, amongst other perks, Paul gets referenced every now and again in videos. Obviously you want this too, and so do check the link in the description. But onwards to the water tank and what lies beneath. For those interested, it's a standard 210 litre food grade water tank, translucent for easy inspection. A large access hatch at the top and a small drain at the bottom that I've sealed and plugged for now. There's also a baffle which limits sloshing around but helps lifting. It'll contain pumped drinking water and melted snow. Anyhow, many moons ago I bedded it onto a thin layer of marine grade two-part polyurethane foam tilt it aft slightly to allow for the curves of the bilge and to stop it protruding into Alan's precious internal space. The foam doesn't stick to the medium density polyethylene, which is helpful. Our attention today is on the left hand edge, where all the structurally supportive high density foam disappears off under the false floor and under the steel racking itself. We poured it in yonks ago, in Alan's earliest days and before the tyranny of my solo ownership. Should we have added ballast weight into the mix then? Yes. Did we? No. Will I now? Well, I'll try. My plan is to start packing more of the solid steel ballast I bought last year into that zone. This was kindly, and indeed expertly, cut into manageable lengths by a long-term friend of Alan, Dick the Skipper. I began the investigation, and aside from an accidental void or two, the original foam filling proved more or less complete. I wasn't seriously intending to use a chisel, but I wanted to see how easy the foam was to break up. Excavation would need something more than this. However, it was a little long, and it wouldn't grip properly in the chuck, so Little Brother took over. The foam removal was about as much fun as it looked. The dust got everywhere, and all the access angles were as awkward as possible. Regardless, it's important never to be defeated by polyurethane foam in any context, or indeed any expanded chemical products that may have forgotten their proper place. It was also the source of some disappointment. Under the false floor, I had installed levelling and support battens, I hoped to circumvent them, but it soon became clear I'd not be able to get clear, deep access from this, the only accessible open end. And if there's something I've learned, it's the hollow finality when wooden battens prove non-circumventable. And then I had to clear up the old foam, and everything else positioned even remotely nearby. Measuring the, now cleared, void that needs to be filled with steel ballast sadly wasn't as simple as three dimensions. Those battens, you see and the angle at which the bilge itself, under the foam, curves up. I didn't want to get through to fibreglass. The foam is a good bedding material and forms a good seal. Yes, the leading edge of the cut foam has no waterproof skin, but the closed cells behind will stay intact. Sometime later, I triumphantly stepped into the light with a bag of vanquished foe. And time to cut some steel. The angle grinder won't suffice. It means the return of the proper metal cutter. All the steel is of basic non-stainless variety due to cost, and the square rod is uncoated, whereas those old chicken farm flat bars are galvanised. These cut ends have been left out in the rain for months, and are only showing vague signs of it, but will find a more lasting protection after I've made the cuts. I had a rough idea of how many bars of various lengths I needed, 
but a lot was going to depend on how they actually slotted into the empty space. Most were 2 or 3 kilos, and even with this compromised mini void to fill, I'm hoping to get a good 40 or 50 kilos under there, and another 20 or 30 on top. The zone will be sealed, and water shouldn't collect, but we all know how water can be, so to avoid rusty stains causing a mess, I zinc coated the steel bars. This is no substitute for hot dip galvanising, but a 98% zinc content paint dries super fast in the summer sun and will provide at least some delay to corrosion. Okay, because space is quite constrained down here, I am going to do this using this little camera. Anyway, you can see the first one is ready to go in. Um, and I'm gonna try and get a view all the way down inside. Let's see if I can put that there. That will probably do the job for a moment. So my main role is to slot it in as far as it will go. I'm afraid the jigsaw puzzle, sliding the bars into place in the best configuration, took long enough for me to concurrently contemplate various scenarios. Most memorably, if Gregor Mendel had chosen different varieties of plants to grow in his greenhouse and not pea plants, we might have needed to wait a while longer to sort out the genetic inheritance stuff. Anyhow, I did it. And then in my excitement, I totally forgot to record a proper clip of the leading edge to show you. So you'll have to believe me that wedged in fairly tightly are a few dozen bars of steel. You'll get closure though in the near future once you've helped me out with the final stage. At this point I am going to ask you for a little bit of advice. I've got those small areas around all of the main ballast, all of the steel bars and blocks. And there are ways that I might be able to pack around that because I don't want them first of all vibrating but secondly I'd like to just try and keep the whole lot as stable as possible and also to avoid any large voids where lo and behold water if it manages to find its way in there uh, might be able to pull. Now there are lots of ways of filling in gaps you could use wooden wedges uh, you could use all sorts of little sort of plastic gubbins but what would be really neat would be able to foam fill it. The problem that I had with foam filling it is that if you use the, um, the two-part uh, closed cell LD40 foam which is what all of this is really strong proper marine grade uh, uh, buoyancy foam then you have to be able to con you have to be able to control it you have to be able to um, corral it into a small area where it puffs up otherwise it will just go everywhere. Uh, you can't spray it very very accurately unless you have one of those large um, machines into a very specific area and it would just be massive overkill in these small zones. And normal spray foam of course is open cell foam and if that gets waterlogged it will rot and it gets absolutely disgusting. So I, I'd like to ask you do you have any ideas about how I can pack around the small areas which are very odd shapes and little crevices. What I'd love to be able to do is simply squirt in and into all these little mini voids uh, a filler. But what sort of filler could that be? I've, I've thought about all sorts of different things, um, different types of uh, epoxy filler and this, that and the other, but uh, I just can't think of an idea at the moment that will work well. So let me know what you think. After a little more googling, I found a couple of one-part squirty foams that claim to be closed cell, but they don't seem to be available in the UK. Squirting in a cheap, waterproof gap filler mastic might work and would be usefully denser than foam, but it won't expand into the nooks and crannies. I know, empty space filled with foam, then all the foam dug out, steel put in, and then more foam added in around it. The sort of mind-bendingly efficient work on board Alan that cements your collective sympathy for him, not me. I mentioned putting some more weight above the floor, and here it is. The spot on top of the plywood false deck, but underneath the box section crossbeam, is dead space. It'll be hidden once the water tank is back in place, and can't be used for storage because there's a large box section span in the way, obviously. A few dozen kilos of steel in place, and then cable tied to secure. Or maybe not. I thought one of my normal general purpose ties would be enough, but I'll need to fetch some longer, heavy duty ones. Ballast done for the day, and it's the final internal location I can find to get weight low down. Later this summer we'll look to Alan's keel, outside. What fun. I noticed some fresh retro comment section applause and adulation for the installation of Alan's heads back in the early days of the channel, and it reminded me to finish this off. An occupant of the heads deserves opulent comfort, and here it is, if I can actually get the backing film off the self-adhesive foam. Oh, and uh, hiding behind here is the completion of what I was doing a few days ago. Let me move all this out of the way. 
sealant gun, wherever you go there's a sealant gun. Um, what do I keep in my loo? Loo roll and obviously a fire extinguisher. But there we are. That means that if there is turbulence whilst you are um, on the throne, then you're not going to bang your head. Quite happy with that. It's reasonably comfortable. I can see myself spending happy hours on here. Paul would be proud. With that, bye.